<laughs> All right, SeanTellFightHype.com. Sean Porter at What a Huge Fight. Sean. Anything but a prediction. Okay. You're getting it, you're getting it all. I wasn't going to ask. Take your time. Oh, okay, good, good. good. I wasn't going to ask, by the way, because yeah. I already knew. Um, but, but just to start, you were just on Speak for Yourself. Yeah. There was this thing you did with Tim Bradley. Uh, it almost looked rehearsed. What was that? Because uh, you guys doing this little backstage talking about the fight. Oh, yeah. It was not rehearsed. That's that's just real energy. You know what I mean? That's That was just us bouncing off of one another, having fun. Uh, I, and I've, I've never been um, quiet about the guys that I want to fight and all that kind of stuff. At one point in time, like, I, he was, for me, the, he was the mark. Like, you got to fight Timothy Bradley. Like, he's the, that's the one fight for me. So he, he knows that. And um, we haven't really talked about it much. We may be a joke or two about it, but, you know, we're, we're friends and all that kind of stuff. But when they asked us to do the video, they, they said, hey, how about you guys talk about what the fight would have been like? And we both laughed it off, and, we, and then we just went for it, and it went the way that it went. But um, to be able to be next to the dude, see him on TV, see how he's improved in such a short amount of time, and, and, and his new craft of commentating, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of him, and I'm, and, I, and I'm very proud to be next to him. You feel like you're spreading your wings this week, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Not just with uh, the, the networks, but just within myself, being able to sit next to Joe Tessitore, uh, Brian Kenny. Uh, even Mark Kriego, of course. I mean, honestly, I'm taking notes. I'm sitting there right now listening to Andre Ward. We have different styles, but I'm still looking at him, listening to his vocabulary and just learning from him in the moment on Speak for Yourself, you know? So for me to be able to learn and like you said, spread my reins, I couldn't ask for anything more than this right now. Now, we were in the lobby yesterday, uh, Leonard Ellerby chopping it up. You yeah, came by and yeah. you go, Hagler Hearns. You, say, you go, Hagler Hearns. Why do you say that? Who said that? You, I didn't say that. Oh, you, somebody you, else said Hagler Hearns, but and but you I said you liked it. You kind of co signed. Somebody it. said uh, they could see this fight being Hagler Hearns. I said, oh yeah, I can see that because the the, the 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 knockout artist turned out to be the guy getting knocked out in that particular fight and in a short amount of time. And I think that you know when when the or excuse me when Tyson Fury's predicting the second round, going right at him, things of this nature, it's like wow, this fight could very well end in you know, two or three rounds, you know, like that of uh, Tyson, or excuse me, um, uh, uh, Leonard, wow, Hagler, uh, Hearns, yeah. Hagler Hearns, yeah, Tommy Hearns and, and, uh, and, and Marvin Hagler. Uh, but, I, and I told y'all this, I said my heart wants 12 hard, exciting rounds. But can, is that possible when one guy know, has man. the kind of punch where, do, can you really have sustained action, you know, back and forth when one guy can punch like that? Uh -huh. I think right now, in, as far as heavyweights go, I think we've been spoiled. I think the heavyweight division has a lot of action right now, which, you know, we're kind of used to a, more of a slower pace fight. And so I think that by being spoiled and seeing what these heavyweights have been able to do in terms of their speed, punch output, the way that they work round after round, I think that that's what really makes me yearn for 12 hard rounds. The uh, first 12 rounds were exciting. To me, there weren't very many lows, but to have more, I, I know that this one has to, it has to be more action, you know, so to get 12 rounds and then also have that action would be amazing to me. So, so like you said, forget a prediction, but what do you visualize Fury doing for his path to victory? I don't know, man. Like I said, I'll speak for yourself. I bought into uh, Tyson Fury wanting to come out, be aggressive, take the fight to Deontay Wilder, and on top of that, knock him out. Yes, I bought into it. Do I know or think he can knock him out? I, I have no clue. We'll find that out tomorrow night. But what I do know is Tyson Fury, number one, coming at Deontay Wilder the way no one has come at Deontay Wilder, the way they probably didn't prepare for in training. I think that that makes for a very exciting couple of rounds. I think number two, if he is effective, again, we don't see that kind of punching power. So maybe he doesn't knock out Deontay Wilder in two rounds, but we get a, a big, exciting opening bout. And then who knows where it's going to lead in right. terms of Deontay Wilder and his team making adjustments and where the fight goes, man. Same question, but for Deontay, what, what, what do you see him doing tomorrow night to get the victory? I believe D. D says, uh, I'm going to use my jab. D says, I'm going to use, I'm gonna hit the body more. And D says, I'm going to be more calm and more patient than I was the first time around. I believe that alone can lead him to a knockout victory. I, I, it's funny because 
Tyson Fury, not only has he been boisterous about what he wants to do, but he has gone to the to, to camp and says, I'm changing everything and I'm coming to do the you like that? I mean, you've been different. with the same trainer your whole career. I do. I like it. You like him getting a new trainer? I do. Be, for, for, for his purpose. But we've seen him make all of the adjustments in the world for this one night. Deontay Wilder, on the, on the other hand, doesn't sound like he's made a lot of physical adjustments, a lot of maybe emote, or excuse me, mental adjustments in terms of how they want to fight, what they want to do, what's going to happen, what we're going to do when this or that happens. But the key adjustment sometimes is in your heart and in your mind that when you take a, when you make a decision within yourself, yo, I was wild, I was not myself. I'm going to be myself, do what I do. I ain't got to change nothing else, and I'm going to knock him out. I love that. Ooh. And then lastly, uh, forget forget the fans for a minute and what they're missing out on. Do the fighters miss out on anything when, they, when they're when they not allowed to do that final face-off? No. They ain't missing out on nothing. They did it <laughs> on Wednesday. That, that You're not, was you a, not looking forward to getting one last look in the Hey, Absolutely not. What's the point? There was a point on Wednesday. There's no point tomorrow, tonight, today. There was a point on Wednesday. Tyson came right up to him. This is how I'm going to be on fight night. And Deontay delivered it right back. The energy raised, and they took it and they took it to another level. Was it just promotion? I think it was promotion. I think it was subliminal messages. I think it was one, one of them trying to get the upper hand on one another from an emotional standpoint, mental standpoint, psychological standpoint. And I do think that the face-off means absolutely nothing today. The face-off is for pitchers. The face-off is for TV. And they don't need that. Thank you, Sean. Killing it. Killing you it. it. Thank you. Man.